So the problem with this argument is that it's a misunderstanding of corporatism. You love capitalism. Really, you do. And you can't stand big government. Really, you can't. I do love capitalism. Well-regulated capitalism, that is. Laissez-faire, crony, and corporate capitalism. These are things I don't like. And I can't stand big government. It's not because of fierce competition in the marketplace or freedom in the marketplace and the lack and the absence of government regulation results in the monopolies from forming. And it's all about understanding what the corporatist system is and why these monopolies formed in the first place. So first of all, what is a corporate system? It's the merger between state and corporations. It is a protectionist system. What the big corporations do is they lobby the government for more government regulations. The more and more pages of regulations there are, the more complicated the regulations become through the thousands of pages of government regulation, the smaller businesses are going to have to try and pay people to try and find loopholes in the government regulation. But there lies the problem. The more and more government regulations there are, the costlier the government regulations become. And the smaller businesses cannot afford to pay people to find loopholes in the government regulations. We've seen this within the American healthcare system where the giant hospitals gained a monopoly as a result of it. The private sector in American healthcare is overregulated by the state because unlike the smaller businesses, the big corporations can afford to pay people to find loopholes in the government regulation. Like I say, in the absence of this, the government regulation, where the market regulates itself, you have more freedom in the marketplace. Therefore, there's more freedom for business, more freedom for smaller businesses to compete for, so there is fierce competition in a free market economy. That fierce competition and strong consumer choice are the two most important elements that prevent the monopolies from forming. Throughout recorded history, it's not because of freedom in the marketplace that resulted in the monopolies from forming. Monopolies throughout recorded history, even cartels, have all stemmed as a result of government's intervention in the economy through what he is supporting through the government regulation. It is subconsciously supporting the very corporatist system that is in place today. Do you use an iPhone, Android, MacBook, PC, read on a Kindle, Watch TV and movies on Netflix, videos on YouTube, shop on Amazon, listen to Spotify, search on Google, send money on Venmo, grab a ride with Uber, drive with Waze, book a room with Airbnb. Are you on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat? You probably use many, if not all of these things. And if you're like me, you love them. In today's world, they're practically necessities. Where do you think they came from? from entrepreneurs with great ideas and the freedom to test them in the marketplace. That is what is known as capitalism. Capitalism did give us all of these wonderful, innovative products. You wouldn't see innovation like this from a non-free market capitalist system like North Korea or China. While these innovations are crucial to a society moving forward, this is no excuse to completely deregulate the capitalist marketplace and demonize sensible government regulation as big government. I think sensible government regulation, if it does serve its purpose and it's proven to be beneficial to the economy, that's reasonable and I think even Adam Smith touched upon this himself. He says that along the lines that you must analyse carefully about the you know, effects that these regulations have and you know if certain regulations are of any benefit then fair enough there's nothing wrong with that completely deregulating to, so that it's completely self-regulating that's a black and white picture i mean what i would typically support is uh, an extremely low level government regulated economy where the economy is strongly regulating itself and for very good reason i have no understanding why anyone who would claim to support capitalism would support a strongly government regulated economy because that essentially is corporatism. A free market is essentially what a free market is. 
It means it's free. It means the economy is self-regulating. It does not mean that the government is strongly regulating your private sector. It doesn't mean you're sitting there with social security in a welfare state. It doesn't mean you're sitting there with a public sector in some sort of mixed economy. And I see a lot of people who claim to support capitalism and yet there they are defending things like the socialist NHS. That really doesn't make sense to me. That's not what a free market is. Just like Denmark, Sweden and Norway, countries that you and PragerU would classify as socialist hellholes that stifle and push back on entrepreneurial spirit, they have every single one of the products that you just listed. Yes, but what you don't touch upon is the very fact that, like I touched upon with Sweden, its most successful economic time period was when it had extremely low levels of government regulation. In other words, it was a strongly self-regulating market economy, which I think contradicts what you have stated. I'm not entirely sure, like I say, but I think it contradicts what you stated because I think you're looking for more government regulation within the economy. And that certainly is not capitalism. Capitalism is about the free market, which I'm pretty sure you would be aware of. Denmark has low levels of government regulation. Norway is an exception, but Norway isn't exactly doing as great as some people like to have you believe. I even had someone in the comment section of a recent video who is from Norway trying to debate me and living in denial of the mess that Norway is in, as if to say that it's economically successful to tear the arse out of, it, of natural resources. So it's hardly a country to emulate, so to speak. They are not as capitalist as you, as you would have people believe. They most certainly are not. They're economies that are not going to sustain themselves in the long term especially Norway. Now consider some other things you probably use. Have you been to the DMV? Gone through airport security, mailed a package at the post office, called the IRS customer service line, or called any government office for that matter. What's different? Why is going to the Apple store so fun, but going to the DMV so painful? Because these are not comparable experiences. The Apple store is a luxury. Macs and iPads are not necessities and Apple's goal is to sell you a product and make a profit. The DMV and other government entities, on the other hand, are completely different. First and foremost, they are not selling you a product and are not there to make a profit. Therefore, they don't need to make their store look nice and pander to human emotions by having great customer service, cool interior design, and sleek new products waiting there for you to purchase. So I had went through travel and tourism. My argument tends to sway in the other direction simply because if it has anything to do with the travel and tourism industry, I can give you an example that I was over in North Italy. I came back, I went through Munich, flew back to Glasgow, and one of the first things that you come across is a theme, and a theme that sells Scotland. I could only imagine that through airports in general that they will um, try and make the customers feel as comfortable as possible and you know that there's a theme to try and sell to tourists so there is something that is that does have a similar value trying to sell to the, the, the country itself that the people are visiting a company like Apple is advertising a specific product their own products your country still has to sell itself you wouldn't want a bad reputation and I feel that the reputation even within the United States and Britain was harmed through terrorist attacks and things became a surveillance state so to speak and, and that kind of puts people off from coming to your country you know it, it might it might put people off because they think to themselves I, I wouldn't want to go to that country and, and you know end up getting arrested and and when when the police are acting like that etc etc so without you realizing it, it you know, things sell just in a different way. Because one has nothing to do with government, and one is the government. One needs to satisfy its customers to survive and grow. One does it. The purpose of government is not to create products, and we don't expect it to. But if you thought about it for a few moments, you'd realize you don't want the government involved in just about anything private business can do. So you're telling me that you don't want the government involved when a business is breaking laws and ripping off customers. You don't want the government involved 
when banks are committing fraud that can lead to a financial crisis. Now this is something that I do strongly disagree with and it's in relation to do with the history of the Great Depression and of course what led to the banking crisis and it's this argument you know as if to say the central banking system's got something to do with capitalism when it really has not and that central banking system set the word central is against everything what capitalism stands for in terms of you know decentralization so in a, a free market you have the a fiercely competitive market where private banks are left to fiercely and rigorously compete against one another. You could talk about how a lack of government regulation was the cause of the banking crisis, for example, which is so far removed from the truth because the FSA in the United Kingdom, and even in the United States of America for that matter, although there was a certain amount of deregulation under Ronald Reagan's tenure as president, of the United States, more regulation had been introduced than what had been deregulated. And we always hear the argument about the Glass-Steagall Act and stuff. And it's no different to Great Britain because the Financial Services Authority were given power and control over the UK's banking regulations. Their handbook was more than 10 and a half thousand pages long in regulations. They controlled the UK banking regulations between 2001 and 2012. So it wasn't a case that the banks were unregulated that led to such a crisis, the banks were overregulated. Denmark stormed past 2008 without a problem and they have low levels of government regulation like I had touched upon before. The reason for why the banking crisis occurred was not because of regulation, uh, per se. It was more to do with the very fact that the bad banks w became too big to fail and that was all down to the protectionism where instead of letting bad banks face punishment for their poor behaviour, instead of punishing incompetency, they continued to subsidise by bailing them out. And this is what we what we know and I'm pretty sure you're aware of about the capitalising and all the gains and socialising the losses or you may want to call it privatising the gains and socialising the losses. What the government did was it stepped in and it said, you know, don't worry about your losses. We will cover that. We will force the taxpayer of society to pay for that. When you take away the risk from creditors. Creditors only care about two things, risk and return. And see when you take away the risk, they know for a fact that all they're going to do is make gains. Because at the end of the day, they're making the gains, but all of their losses are already being paid for by the taxpayer. So they're, they're not having to worry about their losses. And this is what we call the legally protected fraud. Due to the government's intervention and protection of their losses, that resulted in them becoming too big to fail and that is essentially what led to the legally protected fraud, that's what led to the banking crisis itself, not because of some lack of regulation, because like I say the Financial Services Authority, their handbook was more than 10,500 pages long in regulations and the United States was far from anything unregulated. More and more pages of regulation were actually introduced. The incompetency is down to the protectionism. That's what led to the very problem. You know, what you're supposed to do is do what Iceland did. Let the bad banks fail. Let them liquidate. Now, it doesn't mean that when you leave that to liquidate that people lose all of their money. That's not the case. All that happens is, is their assets are bought over by a more efficient competitor. And that more efficient competitor takes their assets and things continue off where it left off from. The only difference is, is that failure, fa failure is punished. You don't want the government involved when a business is dumping chemical waste into a river? 
I think it's reasonable for the government to step in and take action in this regard. The role of the state is there to serve and protect individuals' private property rights. When it comes down to negative externalities like this, and if a business dumps waste into a river, that say it harms another business or other people further down the river, then I do believe that that other individual does have the right to take action to take them to court or whatever. That's because profit-motivated individuals have to work to please their customers. You. In small businesses, this is true. But let's take a look at huge companies that hold monopolies, such as energy companies. They're run by very profit-motivated people, but because they hold monopolies over the areas that they provide the electrical power to, they don't need to please anyone. Look at how Big Pharma gouges the prices of prescription drugs. One company, Mylan, up their price of their EpiPen to 600 bucks, and that was, mind you, a very profit-minded decision, but of course, it was not pleasing to their customers. The same goes for the health insurance industry, a very profit-motive industry, profit-motive industry known for having horrible customer service. So being profit-minded does not always equate to putting the consumer's best interest first. is simply because of what we live under. And it was government's intervention that was responsible for this. Government's regulation is essentially what led to the very monopolistic system. It was through government's intervention in the marketplace that resulted in that. It wasn't because of freedom in the marketplace that resulted in these monopolies. Just look at Hong Kong as a great example. This was a thriving, booming city up until 1997. At least back then, to some degree, they had some freedom to landfill. And because obviously because of their land, they don't have much there, so they have to fill in land. In other words, fill in from the water to raise land in order to expand in building, housing, etc. And ever since the government's interference, and as you know, government owns the land. It prohibits the growth of Hong Kong in many regards and it harmed them in a big way through the mass foreign immigration. People from China were trying to escape China eh, for better life of Hong Kong. You, as you know, cannot ignore the laws of supply and demand. When you have a shortage of housing, with regards to the, the demand that outstrips it because of the immigration, the amount of people flooding in, it causes housing prices to soar. And that's the very reason why you see these problems within Hong Kong today, it was because of the government's intervention. It's not because of the freedom of the marketplace. Government agencies don't have to please anyone. Call that IRS service line if you doubt me. Let's be clear that He's making it seem as though all businesses are like small businesses. But when huge companies have a complete duopoly or monopoly on products, they don't have to please anyone. And the best agency that can stop big businesses from dominating and keeping small businesses, those who are known for customer service, is the government. The government can break up trusts. The government can break up monopolies. And the government can break up corporations that hurt small businesses. But this guy and PragerU don't want them involved at all. Call your energy company's service line when the power goes out and you'll be on hold for a long time. Try calling your health insurance company when something goes wrong and you'll see how long it takes these profit-minded people to get back to you. When you talk about the American healthcare system, there's no greater example of this than from what I've explained to people before about the American Medical Association monopoly over regulation of the government and the private sector that resulted in giant hospitals gaining a monopoly over the, the, the marketplace, as well, of course, the private pharmaceutical companies that allowed, that got away with a collusion because of government's intervention. It wasn't government that prevented these things. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching my video. If you've got anything you'd like to say, comment, question, you know, just comment in the comment section below. I would also like to say a big thank you to Drew, who was kind enough to send me uh, the Constitution of the United States. So a very, very big thank you to yourself, Drew. I honestly greatly appreciate that. 
um, it's something I will have a good read over um, that will probably give me a better understanding of the American Constitution and it's something that is very valuable um, and of course to your your daughter um, that was a very nice drawing of course um, so a very very big thanks to herself which is um, very nice that's very kind of you uh, no doubt some I'll probably see about trying to send yourself across something um, from Scotland um, from this country and yes I more than certainly would love to visit the United States of America um, it's a country that I obviously greatly admire and um, you know that's something that's admirable about the country and defending what is right and that with regards to the United States Constitution um, you can see yourself within this country especially in Scotland and the absence um, and the tyranny from the European Union as well it doesn't help um, our own freedom is being infringed upon freedom of speech etc and uh, we've seen several examples of that uh, more recently and I'm pretty sure you saw enough um, under President Obama when he was, you know, President of the United States. But yes, a very big thank you for that. And to the rest of you, thank you for watching my video and I shall talk to you later. Right? Cheers.